How often have you heard this on the internet? Strong Pokemon. Weak Pokemon. This is only the selfish perception of people. Truly skilled trainers should try to win with the Pokemon they love best. Or how about this one? No one is creative. Everybody uses the same broken Pokemon. Go on any competitive Pokemon Twitter thread and you're sure to see some smug user posting these. Trying to make you feel bad for using strong Pokemon, I guess? And now that we're entering a format where broken legendary Pokemon like Kyogre and Calyrex are illegal, these Karen quoters are going to get more and more common. And in a way, I get it. Seeing more unique Pokemon is interesting. No one wants to see the same thing over and over again. Formats that have diverse creative choices are better, but here's the frustrating thing. These players complain more as formats get more creative. If you look at any restricted Pokemon format, you'll notice that unique, frankly, bad Pokemon that have been legal since the games got released start to show up in tournament winning teams for the first time. But why is that? That's what we're going to look at today. Let's look at some unique, weak Pokemon that only got their time in the sun with broken legendaries to see if we can't figure out why it is that restricteds breed creativity. But first, and I can't believe I'm saying this, this video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Use my link in the description or scan my QR code to get two super strong heroes. Now, I know this game has a reputation, people think it's just another pay-to-win, gotcha-style game, but it's much more than that. Raid is a completely free-to-play game with optional purchases, and take it from me, you could spend a lot of money on this game, but if you don't take the time to master its deep, strategic, party-based combat system, you aren't gonna win anything. Raid's all about proper planning and execution, just like Pokemon. But unlike Pokemon, you're not gonna have to waste time grinding for resources or EXP thanks to Raid's auto-battle mode. You can just set and forget. And right now, Raid has some awesome events going on. During Spring Hunt, Raid players can go to the link on the screen to search for items in the Mistwood, earning you real-world prizes like Amazon gift cards or a game console. And if you join Raid right now and log in 14 days in a row, you can unlock the powerful legendary hero Chronicler Adeline for absolutely free. She's great for debuffing opponents and healing allies, perfect to take on the Sand Devil with. You can join my clan, the Scraw Squad, so we can play Raid Shadow Legends together. Scan the QR code on screen or click the link below to join me and get some absolutely awesome some rewards. Like the Epic Hero Tyrol, and at level 25, you'll receive Rector Droth. Thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Now, back to it. Alrighty, folks. Let's start by looking at a Pokemon I'm sure you've all heard about before. Wolf Glick's 2016 world's winning team featured in Assault Fest Raichu. 2016 was one of the highest power level Pokemon formats ever. Stuff like Mega Evolution, Power Herb Geomancy Xerneas, and the primal form of Kyogre and Groudon. So a 485 base stat Pokemon doesn't exactly seem like something to write home about. So what gives? Well, Raichu did a few very specific things. First off, it has Nuzzle, a very low base power, 100% accurate move that always paralyzes. This was extremely valuable to beat the Geomancy Xerneas that was super popular. Thanks to Wolf's Assault Fest set, he would never get KO'd by plus two Xerneas Dazzling Gleam. So, Raichu could take the hit and nuzzle, slowing it down. Fake Out is always a strong support option. Bolt Switch is always a strong way to pivot. And then we have the infamous Endeavor. A big problem with support Pokemon is often that they cannot help deal real damage in meaningful ways, usually resorting to a weak stab move or helping hand. But this Raichu was calculated to just barely take several very strong attacks in the format, then use Endeavor to drop the opponent to super low HP. Finally, and this is the big one, Raichu has access to Lightning Rod, an ability which redirects Electro-type attacks to the ability's user, giving them a special attack boost instead of the attack dealing any damage. This was super potent on Wolf's team to protect his Kyogre from scary Electro-type attacks. Because of that. And Thunder oh. from Kyogre, but the Raichu switch in. Raichu will take that Thunder for Wolf and actually boost its special attack. Another cool all-generation Pokemon that has only seen serious play in restricted formats is Crobat. The Generation 2 evolved form of Zubat is pretty fast, but has really mediocre bulk and attacking stats. So why? Well, during Generation 6 and Generation 7, Xerneas was running around everywhere, using its powerful Geomancy Power Herb combo to give it a plus two boost in its speed, special attack, and special defense for basically free. Once a Pokemon like that gets going, it's extremely difficult to stop. It's especially difficult with fake out support from Pokemon like Smeargle. Enter Crobat. Crobat has a few very specific things going for it. Number one, as a poison type, it resists Xerneas's powerful fairy type moves. Number two, it gets access to Tailwind of its base 130 speed. Number three, it gets access to Haze, a move that clears away all staff buffs and debuffs. Number four, it's access to Taunt and its great speed made it good at disrupting other support Pokemon. And finally, it has Inner Focus, which would prevent Crobat from flinching. This combination of five very important traits allowed Crobat 
combat to serve as an answer to Geomancy's Ernius, letting it erase their stat boost with Haze, or just stop them from getting boosted in the first place with Taunt. Sadly for Crobat, there was never another time where this combination of traits were important enough that players were willing to try it again. And finally, let's look at one more example, what we'll probably start to see a lot of very soon, Min Xiao. Min Xiao is a pure fighting type from Generation 5. It has a pretty solid attack and good speed stat, but the rest leaves a lot to be desired. Besides, who'd want to play this guy when Urshifu and Iron Hands are legal? Well, surprisingly, when this guy last saw play, Urshifu was popular too. Generation 8 introduced Calyrex Shadow Rider, an absolutely busted psychic and ghost type special attacker that we'll be talking about a lot on this channel soon, trust me. But like any Pokemon, poor Mr. Calyrex does have his weaknesses, specifically two four times weaknesses. Calyrex needs a way to deal with Incineroar, which eats up both of its stab moves and KOs it with Darkest Lariat, or nowadays Knockoff. It needs a way to win the Calyrex mirror match that isn't just hoping on a speed tie, and it needs a way to deal with all those pesky spread moves whizzing around all over the place in restricted formats. And well, Min Xiao just so happens to be the answer. First off, Min Xiao has access to inner focus, meaning that it could not be flinched by fake out, and thanks to a buff to the ability in Generation 8, means that Min Xiao is immune to intimidate from, you guessed it, Incineroar. This means that by leading Calyrex Min Xiao, Incineroar has nothing that it can meaningfully intimidate or fake out, and it is immediately pressured by Min Xiao's strong stab close combat. Additionally, Min Xiao has access to Fake Out, which was relevant to stop Pokemon like Urshifu Single Strike from sucker punching your Calyrex, and Wide Guard, which blocks all spread moves that would hit your Pokemon that turn. Super valuable in a format full of Astral Barrages, Glacial Lances, Water Spouts, and Precipice Blades. Min Xiao's last move slot was free for utility, and thankfully, Min Xiao has a lot of options. Knock off the Hit Opposing Calyrex, Taunt to deny Trick Room or Spore, Coaching to buff its partner, now we have the option of Ice Spinner to remove Terrain, or Upper Hand for Anti-Utility. Personally, I like Taunt right now, but they're all viable. Alright, so we went over a bunch of normally bad Pokemon who were good in restricted formats, but why? What do these guys have in common? Well, you'll notice each of these Pokemon has a long laundry list of characteristics that made them good at dealing with or supporting one specific legendary Pokemon. If even one trait was missing from any one of these Pokemon, they would crumble like a Jenga tower. Now, you might be saying, hold on, Scraw. When I comment that my Terra Fairy Volt Absorb Pachirisu walls rage, Bolt. You laugh at me and make fun of it on Twitter. Why is this any different? Well, first of all, stop interrupting me. I'll explain. In restricted formats, the absurdly powerful legendary Pokemon centralize the metagame, by which I mean like celestial bodies, teams orbit around their restricted Pokemon. You don't just put Calyrex Shadow Rider on your team, you build your entire team around it. Because of this, it is a lot more punishing when you can't bring your restricted Pokemon than it is when you can't bring your randomly powerful Pokemon. If you roll up with your anti-Raging Bolt Pachirisu, I can just leave my Raging Bolt on the bench when we play, and use my team full of Pokemon that are similar power of the Raging Bolt, like Fluttermane and Urshifu, while you, on the other hand, are stuck with a Pachirisu. Don't get me wrong, little guy's a world champion, but he wasn't redirecting Terra Fairy Moon Blasts back in 2000. I'll tell you that much. But in a restricted format, if I have Power Herb Xerneas and you have Crobat like we talked about, suddenly I really need to think twice about if it's worthwhile to bring the piece that my entire team is built around. Crobat's presence makes my Xerneas significantly less powerful and less easy to use. Meanwhile, your Crobat is still paired with your restricted legendary, like say Groudon, just for this example. So while you're giving up some power bringing a niche, weak Pokemon like Crobat, you still get to use your legendary Pokemon at its full power, while mine is stymied by your hyper-specific tech piece. In a similar vein, let's say you're trying to beat Calyrex Shadow Rider teams by packing your team full of powerful Dark-type Pokemon like Incineroar and King Gambit, or bulky Snarl Pokemon like Assault Fest Raging Bolt. By bringing Min Xiao, that mitigates some of your counterplay, and it still lets me get an absurd amount of value out of my Calyrex Shadow Rider despite all of your anti-Calyrex Pokemon. So, there you have it. By centralizing the metagame around a few powerful Pokemon, players have to get creative. Forced to dig through the Pokedex to find Pokemon with a specific combination of attributes that solve their specific restricted Pokemon's problems. There's a lot of other examples of weird Pokemon showing up in restricted legendary formats besides the ones we went over today, like Parasect and Alchemy. Maybe I'll talk about them in some shorts. Thanks for watching as always, bye.